Number seven is Even Stevens. Now, anyone born in the 90s, you know, and grew up in the early 2000s, like me, I was born in 96, uh, you remember Shia LaBeouf as a Disney Channel star playing Louis Steven. Now, he's not a bad actor in his movies now, but what I believe, he does pick a lot of movies. I hate the Transformers trilogy. I hated it. I hated the first one when it came out, and I was just 11. My critical sensibilities hadn't even kicked in yet. I wasn't a movie critic like I am now. I'm not. It's like I'm not. I'm not saying I'm a snob, or I could. I, some people probably would call me that. But seriously, even when I was 11, I didn't like Transformers, and a lot of people were just going uproarious about it. I don't. I didn't get it. And, you know, some people say, "Oh, you're just hating Michael Bay because that's kind of popular." But no, no, he's just really that bad. But that's beside the point. Actually, a good move, good move, a couple of good movies Shia LaBeouf was in was Holes, like I said earlier. He's a really good actor in that. That's probably his best movie. And Disturbia, which was kind of a remake of uh, Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. That man, that's going way back, way. No one even, anyone watching this video probably doesn't even know what I'm referencing. But that's beside the point. Referencing. Did I say that right? Okay. Well, and I farted. But that's beside the point. No, even Stevens. Uh, the sister, again, I can't remember any of their damn names. I'm really pissed off at myself for that. She actually did go, that actress went on to go voice Kim Possible. And that was kind of cool. And I remember the, the Beans. Beans, he was up, his name was Beans. And my sister's boyfriend in real life, his nickname is Beans because he kind of looks like I'm upset. Um, Beans was obsessed with bacon. Now, I know a lot of people obsessed with bacon. My God, there was like, the even Stevens movie, I believe, when they were going on that island, he he packed his bag because he's not even part of the family, but he might as well be. And they're going, he had like nothing but bacon. Like, is that stuff even cooked? Or does he even care? I don't know. But, you know, there's some crazy episodes. Like, it's this, the even, even Stevens, now, it's about the Steven family. Obviously, you know, some, one of the episodes was a Halloween episode where it didn't have something to do with milk. I don't know. The sister was, like, turning everyone into her. And I really rooted for Lewis in whatever crappy situation he was in in any episode. And, like I said, I don't, I don't think Shia LaBeouf is a bad actor. He just has a lot of bad movies. You know... The Holes and Disturbia I can, are the only two movies that I like that he was in, at least so far. Um, but yeah, and I heard they're making a Transformers 4. I might, I may or may not watch it, I don't really know yet. But, he's not going to be in it from what I hear, but... It's kind of weird considering Megan Fox is going to be in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But that's, an, again, I'm talking about, I, I go on tangents, I rant, I'm sorry. That's just the kind of person I am. If you talk to any of my friends in real life, they say I, I do that with, like when I'm talking about just anything. But anyways, even Stevens, you need to watch it if you haven't. Because I remember that one character, he was a black guy. He had weird looking hair, he kind of looked like Chris Tucker, but he wasn't, I think. Um... Uh, that's gonna be really. That probably. That was probably really racist. What I said. I don't know. I'm sorry, but he kind of did look like him. Anyways, yeah, he was an asshole, and I think there was one episode where he actually did get beans poured on him or something. God, there are some really weird situations in that show where that cannot happen in an actual school. Oh, like I remember they had a band where they performed at the top, and they made like a documentary. I think Beans was making the documentary of them, and it was pretty. Oh man. You need to look that one up if it's on YouTube. Number six, The Replacements. Now, The Replacements, it was kind of an average cartoon show. I mean, they it did go through an animation change with uh, the when it got to the second season, and there's another show that did that, but we're going to get to that later. You probably already know what I'm talking about. But, uh, excuse me. Now, The Replacements was about Todd and Riley. Um, they start out as orphans. They even remind you in the freaking intro, the theme of the sh the theme song of the show, and the replacements. Now, they they um got this these adoptive parents. The dad is a stunt guy. He wore he wears his evil Knievel jumpsuit all the time, 
and he, I think he was actually afraid to do some of the things he does, or he gets hurt really easily, even doing just like some mundane activities, which is pretty funny. And, and he was a stunt guy. And the secret agent mom, who they always made fun of how she couldn't cook, and there was even an episode where they go to her old spy school, or the spy school, <laughs> and they go to her old spy school, she's like, she was the top student, there was only one class they ever failed, and the dad and uh, Todd go, well, not Todd, but the dad and, like, the mom's dad, I believe, go cooking, and it's like, correct, like, so that's kind of funny, something like that, but, you know, it, the, what, well, now, what Todd and Riley did, they had these cell phones by a company by Flinko, 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 I think it was Flinko, F-L-E-E-M-C-O, and if there was, like, someone they didn't like, like a teacher, like a, a bitchy teacher, they would uh, click that big ass F button on their phone. Call this one guy. You don't. I don't. Even, you don't even see his face until like the last episode, I believe, which is pretty crazy in itself. But you know, they and they like replace them with someone nicer or cooler or let them do whatever they want. And then it's like it's like very odd parents in a way. Even like with sort of the animation, sort of barely, but more like with the plot and the characters. Or like you know, very odd parents. Timmy wishes for something, and he's, it starts out, you know, decent, and he's, it's working fine, then he's like, something bad starting to happen, and he doesn't like it, and they unwish for it, or whatever, and everything just goes back to normal. Now, the cell phones and the replacements are kind of like the fairies. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, not like, you know, the fairies, you know, as in they're actually fairies, they're just phones. So, they... Pretty much, like, I think maybe the first episode was something about a, replacing a baseball baseball coach where he was like, oh, you know, it's like, you know what a lot of people consider the modern pussification of sports in the youth where he's like, oh, you know, you tried, you were go out and get a pizza or something anyways, you know, even though we all fucking lost. But, I don't really care, I'm not a sports person at all, I really don't give a shit. I'm a nerd, okay, so. But... Yeah, and they replace him with someone really tough, or someone really disciplinary. Disciplinary? There we go. I believe that's the term. So, you know, and there some pretty funny stuff on that show. And there was that weird friend that Riley had that she looked like an anime character. And I think she was even from Japan. And, like, in season two later on, they reveal she's not. She, like, her costume and everything was actually from a anime show or a cartoon or a comic strip um and then like she goes back and she's not she's wearing normal clothes and you can see her hair wasn't actually blue or anything and that's just how he is for the rest of the show so that's pretty crazy in itself so yeah the replacements number five is and i feel this one is very underrated lilo and stitch the series now the movie, I saw the movie when it was in theaters when I was six, seven, and it's still probably one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. I watched it on Netflix again, and I really wish they had the sh I wish, hell, ha like most of these shows on this list aren't even on Netflix. What the hell? Come on, Netflix. Yeah, while we're on Netflix, they're starting to get rid of good TV shows and replacing them with shit now. Married with Children? Gone. South Park? Gone. Like, what's next? Oh, yeah, Beavis and Butthead, gone. Like, I used to watch those shows on Netflix a lot, but now I can't. I didn't even get to finish South Park. And you know how there's, like, they're in the, they have 17 seasons. They have the first 16 on there. I was going to watch them all. I can't even remember what number I made to. Maybe, like, three or four. But whatever. Okay, now that I'm done with that, that rant, I'm sorry. Lilo and Stitch the series. Now, again, this did not last a very long time, and there were some straight to uh video sequels that for you know disney straight to video sequels that usually suck some of them were actually not that bad one of them actually precursors the show and then another one is what happens after the show is over which is pretty crazy in itself but you know stitch the movie and leroy and stitch which are okay not like the show or the original movie but are okay Oh, his stitch has a glitch. God, that was dark. He almost fucking died. That was sad. That made me cry. That that makes me cry now. 
And there's like that nightmare that Leo had, or he, he, you see your bleed? Oh, God. Okay, but the show itself, now it was pretty creative. It's all the experiments that Jumbo ever created, over 600, by God, you know, or whatever you believe in. That's an arch bean joke, sorry. But, you know, all they're like scattered everywhere. They all somehow end up in Hawaii. How convenient is that? Okay, that's kind of a flaw. But, <laughs> they, um, there's like, there, there are some funny moments, and the experiments themselves are really creative, and there's even like a couple episodes where they don't really even deal, deal with experiments, or the monsters or whatever, you want to, aliens, not monsters, and, like, there's an asteroid coming to Earth, and they were all going to evacuate, and they go, they go and destroy that asteroid, or they just push it or something like that. And, God, there was, like, the Bonnie and Clyde, you know, there were, there were two monsters that, that broke into places, and they were literally, and they stole stuff, they robbed stuff, they were literally called Bonnie and Clyde. So they're named after two historical figures, that's kind of cool, I guess that's teaching you something, right? And, it's 1.37, I've been rant, I've been talking for a very long time. <laughs> so this is definitely going to be, probably a two or maybe three part or video. But, now, so the, in Lilo and Stitch the series, they're always they're go, they're trying to they don't want to kill these monsters. They want to like turn it good and have a purpose for them, which is nice. There's nothing wrong with that. I think for some of them though, I swear I think they had no choice but like to put them in prison. Some of them were caught because there was that evil rat thing that Hamster cannot remember his name, but I remember Jumba the not June, but the... God, what was it? Gantu. Gantu. He worked for that guy. Because the weird rat guy, hamster or whatever, he was in a jail cell in outer space. And there was 625, who was later named Ruben, because he loved sandwiches for so, so much. And Ruben, was he voiced by Paul... Paul... God, that guy who does the voice of Yakko on Animaniacs. I could be wrong. Rob Paulson, that's who I'm thinking of, I don't know why I do Paul. Anyways, maybe, I don't know, I didn't look that up. But, you know, there was all funny characters, there was these funny episodes. Stitch fell in love with a, a pink version of himself, sort of female, her name was Angel. She was, in the very last episode, they break all these experiments out, like, out of where they were, and Angel with them, there's a happy ending, like the last frame is freaking Stitch and Angel walking off holding hands. And that's like before they launched, uh, they released Leroy and Stitch. And I think that premiered on Disney Channel before they put it on DVD. I could be wrong, I remember watching it on Disney Channel for the first time. And that was right after that finale, that series finale, so I'm pretty sure if memory serves me correct. And I don't think it has so far. <laughs> But Lilo and Stitch the series, kind of underrated, did not last that long, it should have, especially when you have over 600 experiments, and there were like, what, 65 episodes, maybe? Yeah, like, are you, uh, really? Come on, Disney. Oh god, there was that one dark episode where, I literally, I remember there was like a warning for young viewers before you watch that episode because this experiment was like eh, kind of a tame version of Freddy Krueger. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name right now. But he was like he would if you like if he was in your nightmare, if he was in your dream having making you have a nightmare and you woke up with him still in your head or something like that, then you would like stitch and all of them they would have been stuck in her head forever. Which sounds really weird saying out loud. It's kind of hard to explain. You just need to look that episode up. But yeah, there was a view, there was a warning before that episode, like, can be kind of dark and scary for you know, young viewers. And again, that wasn't new because Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. Where was the warning for that? Was that PG? I don't know, I can't remember. 